Apple just revealed the all new iPhone 15 lineup of phones and across the board, there's a fascinating mixture of both innovation and iteration. They announced a total of four brand new phones. So this is everything you need to know about the iPhone 15 series. To start the entry level iPhone 15 and 15 plus phones will now have the dynamic island, which we saw last year on the 14 pro series. This is something I think a lot of people will enjoy using. And while the dynamic island isn't a revolutionary feature, it's definitely nice to have for things like listening to music or when using maps. One of the biggest surprises of the event is the fact that the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will feature the slightly rounded edges and new design. Previously, it was rumored that the base iPhone 15 would feature the exact same body design as the iPhone 14, but it looks like those rumors were not true, and this is a nice surprise. The 15 and 15 Plus will be available in five different colors, including a new pink option that I think is going to be very, very popular. Now to address the elephant in the room, yes, USB-C is confirmed for the iPhone 15 series of phones. We saw a lot of really solid rumors leading up to this, so it's not a surprise to me to see it in these phones, but it is a little surprising that Apple didn't roll out some big fanfare or like a fancy new name for something that's been around for a really long time. Something that's really disappointing about this though is the fact that USB-C on the 15 and 15 Plus seems to be limited to USB 2.0 speeds, which, why are we doing that, Apple? I can somewhat understand trying to differentiate the pro and base model phones, but limiting USB-C speeds seems like a little bit too much. Another change to the actual design of the base model 15 phones is the fact that the back glass will now have a matte finish rather than the glossy fingerprint magnet that they used to have. A non-glossy finish means less fingerprints, and that's a very welcome to change in my opinion. Beyond the design of these new phones, the 15 and 15 Plus will feature the A16 Bionic chip, which we saw in last year's 14 Pro. I'm personally not the biggest fan of changes like this because now the decision is should I get an iPhone 15 or a 14 Pro and a lot of times the 14 Pro would beat out the 15 in my opinion. I'm also really curious to see how well they've optimized this chip for the 15 because the A16 Bionic definitely ran a little hot in my 14 Pro Max. Hopefully this is an issue that they've sorted out for the 15 because extra heat coming from the chip could also degrade the battery life faster so it's not something that you want to see in any phone. Another nice addition to the 15 and 15 Plus is the fact that the new display can now go up to 2000 peak nits of brightness when outdoors. Now they are also bringing a 48 megapixel camera to the base model 15s, which is a really, really nice change to have. I've heard it's actually a little bit smaller of a sensor compared to last year's 14 Pro, so it's not the exact same camera, but it will be a really big step forward compared to the base model iPhone 14 from last year. Outside of a very, very slight design refresh and some new finishes, I don't know, the iPhone 15 just doesn't feel like that new of a phone. Like most of the stuff that they talked about in the event was stuff that we saw last year and features that we already knew about. My honest opinion is that if you have a new phone within the past two or three years, you probably shouldn't buy an iPhone 15. I can understand the plus because the added battery life is kind of a big selling point for people, but the base 15, definitely not gonna be on my list to pick up. The 15 and 15 Plus will both be available on September 22nd and will start at $799 and $899 respectively. Now the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are a completely different story. And there's one really big, or I guess small reason why I think that these will be one of the best phones to own in the next year. And no, they did not name the bigger phone the iPhone 15 Ultra, but there could be some arguments for a different naming scheme in the future because there are some big differences between even the Pro and the Pro Max. Now, right off the bat, the Pro Model phones feature a titanium body, which will make the phone much more durable, but also significantly lighter. The people who are going hands-on with the devices at the event are already reporting that they feel much lighter in the hand, which will have a significant impact in daily use of the phone. The sides of the Pro Models feature this brushed titanium design, which should eliminate fingerprints and will increase my likelihood of going caseless with this phone. Apple also announced that these are the thinnest borders ever on an iPhone with a much reduced bezel that goes around the entirety of the screen. The Pro models also get USB-C, but this time at USB 3 speeds, which is how it should be. And the biggest change is that there's no more silent switch on the side of the phone. This switch has been there since the very first iPhone, and I think a lot of people are going to be sad to see it go. But in typical Apple fashion, when they remove a feature, they have also introduced a better replacement, and I'm really excited about the new action button. It'll still be a silent switch by default by just holding down on the button, but they did show that you can fully customize this out to do all sorts of things like recording voice memos, opening the camera, or even running shortcuts, which that's a huge deal. While this isn't the first phone to feature a customizable action button, it 
definitely won't be the last. And I think that you're going to see all of the major manufacturers introducing a feature like this in upcoming phones. These phones come in four colors, including black, white, a really nice looking dark blue, and a new titanium gray. Most notably, there is no more gold finish. Apparently they couldn't get it to look good with the titanium edges, but yeah, gold is gone for the iPhone for this year at least. Now the main reason I think the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max will be an absolute game changer of a smartphone is the all new chip. The A17 Pro chip is the world's first three nanometer chip that's in a smartphone. And this is a really significant leap forward for processing power. It features 19 billion transistors and the neural engine can handle up to 35 trillion operations per second. In layman's terms, this just means the chip is much smaller and also much more efficient, which should impact the battery life in a very, very good way. They also introduced a brand new Pro Class 6 core GPU, which apparently is one of the biggest leaps forward for the iPhone ever, according to Apple. This type of GPU will enable ray tracing for video games, and they had a really nice montage where they show console level graphics on an iPhone, and without actually trying them, it looked really good, and I'll be interested to seeing how this translates in real world use. Finally, the 15 Pro and Pro Max see some big increases for the camera, but this is where the phones start to separate in my opinion. Both of them are getting a bigger and better main sensor, which should help with low light and overall sharpness, but the big change is with the zoom lens. The 15 Pro features the same 3x zoom lens that we saw last year, but if you go with the Pro Max, you're going to get an all new 5x zoom lens. Basically, they're using mirrors on the inside of the camera housing to allow for light to bounce back and forth before it hits the sensor, and this makes it so that you can get a bigger optical zoom in the same amount of space. I really wish that this was in both the Pro and the Pro Max, because I don't like when you have a Pro model phone that has more Pro features than another Pro model phone. It just feels like a weird compromise. I'm also a little disappointed that it's only a 5x zoom because we did hear rumors it would be like anywhere between a 6 to a 10x zoom. So yeah, we'll have to see how it looks in person, but I was hoping for a bit more of a reach on that type of a lens. If you're anything like me and use your phone for photo or video often, one of the best changes that they announced in this section of the broadcast is that there will be anti-reflective coatings on the lenses. One of the main issues with iPhone cameras is the lens flaring that you get when you're pointing it at like any source of light. So hopefully that's gone now and will be one of the first things I'm testing. Something that I didn't expect to see is the fact that the 15 Pros can shoot spatial video, which is going to be the new format that you use with the Apple Vision Pro headset. I don't really know how many people will actually use this type of feature, but it will be there if you end up getting an Apple Vision Pro sometime next year. Between the new design, the updated cameras, and the really exciting three nanometer chip, I think the 15 Pro and Pro Max are actually a really attractive looking phone. If you have an iPhone 12 or newer, you probably don't need to update to this phone, but I am really curious to see how the experience of using one is compared to last year's 14 Pro Max. Things like USB-C, the action button, thinner bezels, and refresh design are really nice to see in this year's phones. I do think that Apple misses the mark entirely with the 60 hertz refresh rate and the capped USB-C speeds on the base model 15, but you know, what can you do? I'll be getting the 15 Pro Max on day one, so make sure to subscribe for my deep dive reviews soon. Take care.